Hey everyone, I'm Angela Lynn. And I'm Jessie Lynn, and welcome back to another episode of But Where Are You Really From? Today we're talking about self-growth again, but focusing on the specific element of trying to remain emotionally balanced. I wanted to talk about this like more recently because I had been introduced more deeply into a specific framework for achieving emotional balance. And it's called The Work by Katie Byron. And I was like, holy shit, this is like a really good framework. And I will say, like, we can go into it later, what it actually entails. But one of the things that I find interesting about all the self-growth stuff is I feel like at the end of the day, it's all kind of the same stuff, but like packaged slightly differently. And so one of the reasons why her framework resonated with me was I was like, this is essentially the same as what I learned in the Vipassana, like that 10 day silent meditation retreat that I did, where it was about like being so in tune with like the sensations in your body that you can just be present so that you're not focused on the past or the future and the sufferings that you kind of like attach with either of those things. But I found her book interesting because it gave a bit more of a like practical way of how to actually do that versus just telling you like you need to be present. It has a little bit more of like a way in to get you there. So I find it really interesting. I'm definitely not perfect at it still. I been practicing more and more and i do think it helps when i practice it when we discussed and brainstormed about this episode when angelo mentioned the framework i was like oh this is like really similar to something that i had like posted up on my wall during the pandemic because i had gotten so overworked and overstressed and it was also really challenging because you had like no social outlet so it was just like constant social frustration That I had to put something up to be like, I need to remind myself to not be so reactive to how people were approaching me digitally. Because, you know, like sometimes a coworker can can reach out to you and they might be communicating in a way where you're like, what a bitch. Like, wow, like no good morning. Or or if you prefer a more like brust style, you might be like, wow, this coworker is wasting my time. Like, why is she like? doing these all these niceties I just want to get you know whatever it is out the way so I had to put this thing on my wall to like remind myself to to take a minute and like stop and think before I responded partially for the balance piece but also so I wouldn't get fired for saying anything (laughs) too extreme to a coworker. not that I I don't think I ever did but it was just like I was getting to a point where I was like getting so steamed. I was like, I need to like figure a way to to cool myself off. Yeah. Do you have a specific framework and where did you learn it? I think I just like looked up, like Googled random things. And basically the thing that I had printed on or written on a piece of paper basic was, is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? And oh, actually, this came from one of the calm meditations that I did. And I was like looking into it uh, afterwards. But basically, it's like if these things don't align to your thought, then maybe you want to let that thought go. And it's like not, you don't need to have, you don't need to communicate that. Yeah, those three questions definitely like there's overlap in so many of these frameworks or guides for helping you with emotional balance. My framework, the the work by Katie Byron, it's mostly these four questions, but also there's this thing called turnarounds, which is, I think, one of the more powerful parts of it. So essentially the four questions are like, do you know that this is true? Whatever thought you're thinking. Yes, no. And oh, that's the part that I really like about her framework is there's no gray area. You can't be like, yes, well, in this situation, it's like, it's just yes or no. You, you There's no other answer. So it's like, is it true? Yes, no. Second question is, are you absolutely sure it's true? (laughs) Because a lot of times your emotional response is like, yes, obviously, he's a monster. Like, he's a monster is a thought. And you're like, yes. And then it's like, do you absolutely know that that's true? In like reality, right? It's like, no, no. And then the third question is, what kind of person would you be? Or like, what kind of state would you be in if you believe that that statement is true? 
And then the fourth question is, who would you be without that thought? But the magical part for me is the thing called the turnarounds, which is where you flip your original statement in as many ways as you can flip it. And you are forced to find evidence of how those statements are just as true or truer than your original statement. So if the statement is like, he's a monster, a a flip would be like, he's an angel. And then you have to find like real examples in your life of like, okay, well, he was generous in this moment. He would, he did show me love in this other moment, like all this stuff. And then another one could be like, I'm a monster. And be like, oh, well, yeah, I guess I was screaming and I was doing these things and whatever. And kind of the point of all this, or at least for me, why it's magical for me is when I go through the turnarounds, it calms me down. And I think part of it is that you're forced to use your brain And like when you're really riled up with emotion, it's hard to think necessarily with your brain. You're kind of like on the more animal brain side where you're just like reacting based on what you feel. And it feels like there's no other way you could possibly act. But then when you force your brain to activate and like think through, like truly focus and think through stuff, it naturally calms down the emotion side because you can't necessarily have both like super strong at the same time. And by the end of me thinking through all this stuff, not only has it calmed down the emotions just because I'm activating my brain, but it also has forced me to look at things from all these different ways so that if I was feeling so negative about that original thought, I have all this evidence to show me like that original thought isn't even necessarily true. And then especially if you've turned it around to show like your part in it, then you realize like, actually, I probably made that person feel kind of shitty too in these ways. And you have more empathy towards that person, the situation and yourself. And so it brings me to a point where I'm more able to like kind of reattempt to have a conversation in a more like compassionate way and hopefully like less emotional uh, response kind of way. Hey listeners, wondering how you can support us? The biggest way is by increasing our visibility by following us on Instagram at where are you from pod, on TikTok at but where are you really from, subscribing to our YouTube channel under but where are you really from podcast, rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts, and telling your friends. The more people we can get to listen to the show, the more we can continue spotlighting different perspectives and stories. And if you feel so inclined, we're also accepting donations at buymeacoffee.com slash where are you from. Thanks y'all. I wonder how you get to the state where you can employ the work because one of the challenges I really have is I feel like when I calm down enough, my brain is naturally doing kind of what you're saying. So it's like asking questions about what happened and then being like, is that really, is that really what happened? Like, am I really slanting it? But it's like so hard when you're just like in the middle of it to even want to do that. Like, you're like, I don't want to do that. Like, It sounds crazy, but you're like, I'm mad. I want to stay mad kind of feeling. And so that's like definitely one of the one of the challenges that I have in general following some of the meditative or like emotional regulation workflows where it's like, I will walk through it. But then it's like almost like I'm confronting emotion with logic. And that never works for me. It's always just like, I don't don't care. I'm the wrong party here. I don't care. So for me, I think it just takes a lot of practice because what you described of like you choosing to be like, I am angry and I'm going to fucking stay angry. I have heard that same thought in my head so many times. But I will say, I think that's already progress that you're even hearing that thought. I similarly am kind of stuck currently at the spot where I've become much more self-aware of when I'm dysregulated, when I'm angry, when I'm feeling some sort of way but i don't always choose to uh, do something about it but if you're not happy with the consequences and the outcomes of the way that you continue to behave that's kind of your own regulator it's like it's your own motivator so that's why i say it's like it feels like it's all just like this long ass journey is because you know what the goal is. Like it, all the self-growth stuff, like from day one, you know what the goal is. Your, your goal is to be fucking like not triggered when little shit happens, like be able to convey your point of view in a 
like unemotional and like acceptable, respectful manner and have just like, you know, constructive conversations with somebody that you may be in conflict or tension with. But easier said than done. Just because you know what the goal is doesn't mean you know how to necessarily get there. And even with these frameworks, you know how to get there with, in theory, with the tools. But without enough practice, you can't like fully activate those tools to get you to that end goal. So that's kind of how I see it is like I'm trying to beat myself up less about not being at that end goal now because I'm encouraged that the fact that I can even hear that voice saying you're angry right now and I'm choosing to stay angry is a new thing for me. I didn't used to have that voice at all. I'm hopeful that having developed that voice at all means that I can train it to eventually do something like the work, but I'm hoping that with enough times of like doing that, I can minimize the duration to the point where it happens like in my head while it's happening, while the fight is happening. So that's kind of where my thought process is. For me, I feel like the end state is to not necessarily never be triggered and always be calm, but to be able to like embrace all of the different emotions that I have equally. And what I found when I come out of like the haze of being really mad or really upset at something is I'm like, oh, I can like, I can hear all of these other emotions like guilt or like the desire to undo what I just did or to like demonstrate gratitude or love. So like those things are all there. But I feel like those things can be tied to emotions that are so uncomfortable that the voice of those emotions is so muted compared to like upset feelings, right? Upset feelings are always just kind of like, ah, they're always kind of like there. And so what I found is like, I can hear those things like a lot more afterwards. And I want to like, lean into those more where it's like, I can amplify those feelings rather than the negative feelings. So it's not so all-consuming. Because I, I feel like, for me, the whole balance thing, it's kind of like, I don't know, you've ever ridden those things where it's like a, a board and there's a little rolly thing in the middle and you're kind of just like, like this. Um, it's definitely that for me where I'm just trying to like find the sweet spot. You're always kind of moving, right? You're never, like, at least I'm never just like perfectly even, but you're always kind of like tilting back and forth. And that's what I, I want to do. Like, I want to try to find those, like, different emotional voices and, like, balance it more so that when I am in a really angry state, I can bring in some more, like, gratitude or some more love to try to, like, even even that out and even out how that feels. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that we have slightly different interpretations of what the end goal is and what emotional balance even means. I do think what you're focusing on is a weak point for me. A lot of these frameworks that I'm using, one of the weak points that I've brought up even with my therapist is I I was like, I kind of feel like all these frameworks that I'm using are like suppressing emotion or just kind of like telling it to like not exist and like move on and like be okay and live in the present without the emotion, right? Versus I do think what you're saying of like recognizing all these emotions exist and being okay that they exist and being able to draw on the positive emotions to balance out negative emotions. I think that's really important. And it's something that I haven't quite like figured out the way to do yet. But my therapist and I have recently been talking about it too, where she was like, yeah, suppressing your emotions is probably not like the best way. Like maybe you can marry a few different tools together. And uh, so one of the things we've talked about is like, okay, before you do the work, maybe you can do a little bit of like self-validation so it doesn't feel like you're just like shoving shit away to adopt a voice that comes first before the work stuff comes in where it's like, okay, I'm feeling angry or I'm feeling exhausted for like emotionally exhausted from this. I'm feeling depressed about this and it's okay to be depressed. It's okay. Like anyone who's in this situation would feel depressed if they were being like receiving all this stuff, whatever. Giving myself that moment to like acknowledge whatever I'm feeling and validating that it's normal and okay to like feel that thing before going into like, okay, do you really want to stay in this? You know, like, because 
for now, I jump straight to the work stuff. And while it's good that like I do come down from the high of like the height of my emotion, but for now, it does have this little like kind of condescending voice, this tone when I go into it where it's like, do you really want it? You know, like it. And so it doesn't feel good necessarily to like hear that voice. So I'm trying, I need to find a way to integrate the like acceptance of the emotions for what they are first before trying to ignore them. Of course. Yeah, I've, I love that you are trying to work on that. And honestly, it's like a recent revelation for me too. And I really agree with everything that you're saying about the meditative works. Like there was definitely a period where I felt like I was like, I, the emotions are gone, but I don't think that they're dealt with in a sense. And I went through something recently where I was just like, I know there's something underneath there, but I've gotten so good at like moving along, passing it along, that it's like this blank space inside me between the emo- me and the emotions and I cannot reach it. But I know I have to because it's upsetting me. And um, yeah, so that, that's why I, that, w- that was my whole thing about like, I need to like, feel more of these things and not be afraid to be lost in some of the emotions sometimes because it's for me it's very scary to be lost in a like angry or sad emotion because i i just i when i look back on that in a calmer situation i'm like who was that person like i don't really recognize that person it makes you feel kind of icky about yourself but i feel like i need to kind of as you're saying like embrace process deal with more of that and then and then you can truly let it go i love it well obviously we're both still hot messes that are trying to figure out our shit um listeners what kind of frameworks do you use what kind of methods do you use to try to bring yourself back to an emotionally balanced state or do you even think that that's a goal that you think is important in your life if not, tell us why. So listeners, let us know what works for you because I we'd love to learn some more stuff that could help us as well. And hopefully some of what we shared about what works for us can help you too. This is the last episode of this batch. So sorry, <laughs> there is no new episode coming next week. But if you miss us, listen back to our past episodes um, and support us on social media. And until next time, Sajin, bitches. bitches.